Good morning, my people. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, beloveds. Those of the beloved. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning. It is Friday. And you know, today is a day that many people celebrate Good Friday. As we truly don't know the day that Jesus died, but praise God for a time of remembrance. Praise God for a time that we're able to um, be reminded of the death and resurrection. I'm, I'm just saying, we all need to be reminded sometimes. So praise God that today is a day of being reminded. So good morning. There's no greater medicine than that. To be reminded of our Savior. Man, that's what the medicine is all about. Good morning, good morning. So today's prescription comes from Proverbs chapter 2, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 5 says, Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find knowledge of God. Now, I just want to mess with that first part. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord. As I just were reflecting this morning, and you know, I, as I said, it's always good to be reminded of, man, just of the death and the resurrection. You can't separate those, and they have to go together. But I'm just reminded. It's just, it's amazing to me because when I was like, man, it's, it's the day that, you know, we celebrate Good Friday. And I'm just meditating on the morning medicine this morning and how God just be lining these things up. I mean, you just can't put it together like this. And from the thought he gave me this morning to share with the prescription, And when you just think about it, I mean, have you ever just sat there and really just truly thought about it? Truly thought about Jesus. I'm talking about truly thought about what he did. I mean, I mean, seriously, have you just sat there and just meditated on what he did? And I ask that because sometimes we treat it as if we were owed it or something. We treat it as if we were entitled to it. Like he had to do that for us. And we have this mentality of entitlement. That what he did is like, man, he better had done. He better. And I'm just saying, sometimes we take that mentality and we act like that when it comes to Christ. And I, I just want us to really just engulf this, this whole thing or this whole fulfillment of the prophecy that the prophets of old spoke of, didn't understand, but yet God gave them a revelation and they spoke of the revelation and we are in that revelation. We are experiencing, as the book of Peter says, what they truly long for angels and the prophets of old, but yet we're living in it. And I just really want us to really, really just think about this for a second. Do you truly understand the fear of the Lord? Do you truly understand? Do you truly understand in whom the God we're dealing with? I mean, do you truly understand that God 
would wrap himself in flesh and dwelt amongst us, allow himself to be crucified and lay down his life and then pick it back up again so that we all could be invited to spend eternity with him, to be broken free from the slaves of from the slavery of sin, the bondage that the enemy had us in, and yet we've been set free from the works of the enemy. I'm saying, do you truly understand what we're dealing with? Do you truly grab hold of, or is it just, a good Friday, meaning that it's just a day that you celebrate, not every day. You think about it from time to time, it comes to mind. You know I'm saying, do you understand enough for you to live it? And I just really want to put this up on our minds today for the morning medicine. Do you truly understand the fear of the Lord. And I really tie that to this. Because I, I truly believe that if we truly understood the fear of the Lord, then there's some things that you just wouldn't be doing. There's some things you wouldn't continue to do if you truly understood. You would not be settled in sin, comfortable with a position that is not pleasing to him, content with immorality, content with the work that's not even in him, if you understood the fear of the Lord. Do we understand the God that we're dealing with here? If God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, I just wanted to want us to peep this. And this love he lavished. Do we ever think about the other side? His wrath? I, I have to pause. I really want us to think about this. Because I don't think many of us truly understand the fear of the Lord. Because when you reverence him, there's some things you just can't do because your aim is to please him. And so the conviction comes because I understand this is not pleasing to him, but and when you don't have that, I believe it's because you truly don't understand the fear of the Lord. You truly don't understand the God that we're dealing with here. There's no, there's no reverence for him. And that reverence for him is not enough for you to actually stop what you're doing, to come to him what you're doing, or watch this. You're not afraid of the wrath. You just think and deceive by just the love. The love is there, but remember, love comes with an expectation. It demands a, re a proper response. And when we don't have that reverence and we don't understand the fear of the Lord, just look at your response to his love. Look at how and what you're doing. Look at how and how you're acting. Just look. Is that reverence for the fear of the Lord? Is that? 
and understanding. I'm saying you grade your paper. You grade your paper. I don't know what type of love if you continue to cheat. What type of love is that? What type of love that he has to argue with you in order for you to do, in order for you to surrender, in order for you to submit? What type of love if you decide what you will and will not obey? I don't know if that's understanding the fear of the Lord. I mean, do you truly understand whom we're dealing with here? This is a God who, this is a God with all power in his hands. So if he has all power in his hands, why would you play with him? Do you not think he sees? Matthew chapter 10, verse 15. I'm gonna read a couple of scriptures. I really want us to ponder on this. I really want us to ponder on this. Do you truly understand the fear of the Lord? Because when you do, you take his word a little bit differently. You take his word a little bit more seriously. Because I understand the fear of the Lord. This is a God. I, I really want us to grab hold of this. This is a God who in Genesis chapter 6 all the way to chapter 9 flooded the earth like this. 40 days, 40 nights, earth gone. Let's start over with Noah. This is a God in the book of Exodus, man. He about to start back over with Moses. But Moses pleaded for the people. Man, this is a God who parted the Red Sea. Who made the waters go back. This is a God who brought plagues upon plagues upon plagues. This is a God who nature bows down to. Who could call a million tornadoes and wipe out the earth right now, today, tonight. And start back over. I mean, do you truly understand the God that we're dealing with here? He is not to be played with. So why keep playing with him? Why do you act as if his word, you can just, nah, man, I'll, I'll do it when I feel like doing it. Do you not understand that the book of James chapter four says tomorrow is not promised? I'm saying if you go before God, is that the time you'll understand, but then it'll be too late because he's already said it over and over and over. We're all on a disposition, uh, dispensation of grace. But grace got to come into account. And where you come before judgment, he'll show you where you lie at in truth. And truth exposes lies. And when you get before him, there's no more lying. But I think deep down in your heart, when you got the understanding there's no reverence. And I'm even saying there's not reverence to the degree that he's calling to be reverenced. This is a God who, when the angels come in his presence, they just bow down. I don't care who, they just bow down. They truly understand whom the God they're dealing with. Satan even comes to God and asks if he can. He understands that reverence. Go look at Job chapter one. But yet, do you? You don't ask God nothing. You just do what you want to do 
but yet you say you belong to him, but you still do what you want to do, say what you want to say. And oh, yeah, 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 that's right. He'll forgive me. What type of reverence is that? What type of love is that? If somebody treated us like, like we treat God, we would even, we would tell them they truly don't love us. Genesis, Matthew chapter 10, verse 15. It says this, Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Jesus sent the disciples out two by two, and he told them to go into uh, enter into the cities and go and preach the word. I'm going to go start in verse 11 so you can get the whole gist of what he's saying. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you nor hear your words when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. God said it'll be more tolerable. It'll be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for those who don't receive his word, who don't receive Christ. It'd be more tolerable. Sodom and Gomorrah in the Old Testament, the Bible says, because of so much immorality there, so much pride and so much all of this was going on in that city, the Bible says he rained, he rained fire from the earth, I mean from the heaven, and, he, and it rained down upon Sodom and Gomorrah, and Sodom and Gomorrah is no more to this day. And the Bible says it'll be worse than that for those who rebuke or do not receive Christ. It'll be even worse on the day of judgment for them. What is God communicating here? Do you truly understand who we're dealing with? Do you truly understand? This is a God who's saying, look, you better understand. Because if you play with this, you'll see that I'm really nothing to be played with. Do you truly understand? Galatians chapter five. I'm saying we don't, do we, do you truly understand this God? Why is he telling you all these things not to be a part of? Why he's telling you do not taste this, do not, why is he telling you that? Because he sees what it'll cost. And because of reverence for him, Man, I'm not trying to do that. Because God is, he has laid it all out before me, what it will cost me. And when you have reverential fear for him, you don't want to play with him like that. So I'm not even going to go down that road. Why? Man, he told me not to. Man, come on, man. Even when people, nah, man, I'm good, man. I'm good. Do you, uh, do you truly understand? Or do you keep playing with them? Every single day I look and you turn on the news and people dying like this, left and right. And I just think about, man, that person didn't even know they were dying today. And I wonder if they played with God. I wonder if they played with the gospel. If they played with the salvation of Jesus, if they played with it, they said they believed, but when it came to their life, man, look what, you don't know what they believe. And you're going to go before God with that gamble? I mean, do you truly understand if God said he did all of that and you rejected it, took it for granted, played with it, made it as if it's foolish? 
some of us even the uh the leader of leading others to sin and the bible says it'll be worse for that person they'll be like a, a have a millstone tied around their neck and cast into the sea it'll be worse for them those who lead others to sin but yet you keep being an advocate leading those to sin lifestyles that you know is not pleasing to him but yet you're the main advocate but yet you want to throw god blessed at the end or when you win award man stop all that do you truly understand what it means to reverence him you can't play with him like that you can't play with him like that you think god don't see all but you keep playing with him as if he don't man do you truly understand who we're dealing with here Galatians chapter 5, I'm just going to read this thing. Starting in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar I am warning you about these things as I warned you before that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm not saying this. He's telling you those who practice this, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. This is your lifestyle, man. You're not. You want to inherit the kingdom of God. Do you truly understand who we're dealing with here? This is a guy who has uh, the final decision of where you spend eternity. We're not talking about temporary. How many years that whoever lives on earth is temporary? A hundred years to eternity can't even compare. This is a guy who has the decision in his hand. And we're going to play around with that? You got to keep playing around with your eternal state. Man, do you truly understand who you're dealing with here? Playing around with it as if it's just a game? He says you won't inherit the kingdom of God. You think that you can live any type of way on earth and then expect the pleasures of heaven? playing with God. You're playing with God. Matthew chapter 7 says, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we did this in your name and that in your name. And the Bible says when they come before him, he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, I never knew you. I, I I just, I don't know. When I read those words, I just hate to get before God and hear those words. I hate to get before it because what do you do then? You can't do nothing. Because you rejected the gospel. You rejected an opportunity. You played with him as if he was something to play with. You played around with your time on earth. And you did not want the pleasures of heaven. How? How do we know that? Look at how you chose to live on earth. As we enter this Good Friday, we think about the Lord. I'm just saying, your good is more than this Friday. Do you truly understand the God in whom we're dealing with here? 
Do you truly understand all what he's spending to speak to you, bring people to you, the things that he keeps revealing to you, the things he keeps showing you, the things you keep bumping into, the reminders, the warnings and the warnings? Do you not think he's doing that purposely for a reason? Because to God, your day is marked out already when you meet him. But to me, it's unknowing. And if God is warning, he sees some things. But when you play around with him, you don't take it that serious. And I'm just asking that. Because I'd hate to hear anybody hear those words. Because then it'll be too late. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe many people are going to be shocked. And, and let me tell you why. Because when you look into the eyes of the Lord, You'll know. You'll know how you played around with it. You'll know. You'll know what you were teaching and not teaching your children. You'll know. Of the things you were doing behind closed doors, you'll know. How you weren't, your aim was not to please the Lord, you'll know. How you lived as if you just wanted to inherit earth. But you yet didn't want to store up anything in heaven because you weren't willing to lay down your life. See, the Good Friday is a reminder that as Christ laid it down, are you laying it down? Are you still playing with him? Playing with him as if it's not serious. If God did all of this, how can we not take it serious? I'm saying we have to start looking at if God did all of this, that must mean that my life is in a predicament that I don't even understand the depthness of it if he had to do that for me. So why wouldn't I give my life to him? Why wouldn't I decide to live wholeheartedly for him? Because if he is who he says he is, all good, all great, whatever wonderful verb you want to use, a noun or adjective or whatever the case may be, if he's all that, then why would I short myself of receiving all that? Do you truly understand who we're dealing with here? Do you truly understand Good Friday? Or are you still playing around? Have you somehow been deceived to think, I'll get it right at the end. I'll get it right right before I die. I have time. Plan around. <laughs> you plan around. You plan around if you think that he does not see what you continue to choose over him. You're playing around if he says in the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and chapter 6, where he says, Man, if you don't forgive, I won't forgive you. And so you choose to stay in unforgiveness. You're playing around. Because his word says what it says. Why would you play around? And if you're in a place that you feel hurt from that, uh, what was done to you, then why are you not coming to him and saying, God, I know what you said. Help me because I don't want you not to forgive me. That's reverential fear for him. Do you truly understand? Because I understand it enough that even if I'm I'm struggling with it, God, I don't want to play around with it. So I'm gonna come lay it down at the, I'm gonna lay it down before you. Just like you did for me on Good Friday. 
I'm saying, do you truly understand who we're dealing with here? God is not a God to be played with. And I hate for any one of us to find out that at the end of our life, when we're before the judgment seat. Because you thought you could play with him. He's nothing to be played with. And I'm just saying, he deserves better. Do you truly understand who we're dealing with? This is your morning medicine. Something for us to think about as we enter into the weekend. Where are you at in your relationship with the Lord? Are you playing around with this walk? Are you playing around with it? Do you truly think that God does not see what you're doing? The things you're doing, rather it be behind closed doors, the places you're, do you not truly see? Well, you don't take his word serious. He said those will not inherit the kingdom of God. You think he planned? If he's a God that will not lie, you think he's lying to you? I know one thing. My mama, when she said some stuff, I knew she wasn't playing. Someday my mama joke her. But other times, <laughs> she wasn't playing. And those are the times <laughs> I truly understood. And sometimes I waited too late. She was in my room with that belt. I'm just saying, do you truly understand? I pray that it not be too late. This is your morning medicine. Happy Good Friday.